Hey, hello everybody. So today I wanted to do a bit of a shipbuilding stream. One, because I need to rebuild, need to rebuild some fleets. And two, I think we still need to get some uh, fleet building uh, guides and a bit of thought explanation occurring uh, for Nebulous Fleet Command. We don't have a lot of that. A lot around mechanics, a lot around gameplay, but not too much around building actual fleets. It looks like we the stream may be a little bit jumpy as well, so we'll see if we can rectify that along the way. But for us to start, I'm going to go into the fleet editor, and I think we're just going to build one of the easier fleets for newer players, and that is largely around uh, or going to be centered around light cruisers. If I just get rid of that, so the light cruiser is a, a fairly, uh, or it can be a fairly fast ship. It can be a fairly versatile ship in uh, either having guns or missiles. We're gonna build this one, this fleet with guns. Um, it also has a fair enough armor that if you start to get uh, hit by rails or anything larger, uh, and sort of like the 120s, even some 250s, newer players are gonna survive a little bit longer uh, with this ship as well. So to start off, we're just gonna sketch in uh, we're just going to use one because then we'll use it as a template for others. But we're just going to sketch in and add the main armaments being the Mark 64s. So the 250 millimeters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two on top. Um, so let's just sketch out the front. You can actually turn these warnings off. Um, this one here not assigned to groups. If you go into settings, you can actually turn that one off. The rest are just reminders. So we'll sketch in the main armaments uh, and we'll also put in a bit of uh, point defense in the terms of a VLS 23. So we're gonna load this largely with chaff just to start with. And what else have we got? I think to start off with as well, we're also just gonna run a bit of Point defense in the terms of rebounds so this is flak but the strategy that you'd be using with this um, light cruiser setup so eventually there'll be three light cruisers that they're going to run together and by running together you're going to be able to um, have all of the different point defense here covering each other and then from there you'll be able to um, when when you're fleet building you have to give up on something you can take away one of these uh, for something else, and you'll see that later. So, what do we have? Virus guy. Started with CH. I, I'm a big fan of the heavy cruisers. I just love the aesthetic. But, um, I really need to build out the heavy cruisers for me. <laughs> uh, Alright, what else are we going to do? Um, because we're putting guns on it, we are going to load up with ammunition elevators. We'll put two of those in to start with, and I think we'll also put in one mount gyros just for the uh, reduction in spread and the traversal rate. So when we um, have to engage, that's going to make the, the turrets move around a little bit quicker. And just a note for anyone watching as well, you know what these yellow rings and red rings mean. So basically, if you have everything target all five guns here targeting say um something at the bottom and they're all pointing this way when you need to switch targets up to the front these ones with the red rings are going to have to traverse from here and all, go all the way back around whereas the ones with yellow can actually go either way and that's important when you want to place certain things so if you wanted to put iwa um like a blanket jammer on top for example you know, it could rotate all the way around, plus its elevation and whatnot. Hey, Blacklight, how are you, man? Uh, what else are we going to do? All right, so we've we've sketched in our guns. We'll eventually reduce these back down, I think, down to four. Um, because I think what we want to do is also put some... Um, one of these mounts will here will become a blanket jammer. Because that's one of the things we need. Next, we're going to do is we're going to remove that uh, basic CIC it always defaults to compartment one, which puts it in the middle. Uh, we are gonna put it out the back here. 
We're going to make it a reinforced CIC. A little bit more expensive, but it won't die straight away. And that way, when we are engaging with this fleet and we want to keep the nose pointed towards the enemy, we're going to really be able to protect that CIC. And we'll do the same thing with um, a reinforced magazine as well. So where do we want it? I'm going to put a reinforced magazine up the top. One thing to note with the magazines, they scale based on size. Some of you will know that, but uh, by putting a magazine in a larger component, you're going to have a larger space. And just for um, comparison, see here in compartment eight, which is here, I put the same reinforced magazine. We now have half the space because it is half of the size. And if I, we also come have a look at this, some have compounding costs. In this case, you've got um, one by compounding cost. First one's free, the next one is going to cost 24 points, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll just remove this one for now. The other thing um, to note as well is once you've got your magazine, the first magazine, whatever you've got the ammo nature for that uh, type of rounds in that magazine is what the first thing will be loaded. So we'll always put uh, HE first. We'll also take some uh, RPF for the smaller ships and AP for the larger ships, and we'll come back and do values uh, later on. We're just sketching everything in at the moment. Uh, with all that, we've now got the five guns. We've also gonna throw in some damage control, put in a large DC there. How many points are we are at? 804, so we wanna keep about each ship around a thousand points, uh, and then we'll just Add some uh, up and downs after that. Add a... This is where you start to run out of positions. I will add another large DC locker there. And we're also going to add... This is where we go, the difference between um, something to buff, either a small workshop or a damage control center. We want something to move around. They're at the same price. You can take both, but they are they do add up. Um, do we want res repair speed over movement? I think we'll go movement so we just get everything in there and we'll, we'll come back and have a look at that. All right, so that's that's good enough now that it is... Uh, we'll add these to a, a gun group. Um, let's call it the... Uh, let's call it guns because it doesn't need to be anything specific. So when you're building, you know, something that's going to largely be templated like this, you can you can pretty much just build one, and then if you come across up the top, you can create a blue uh, create a blueprint. Now this is where you can save it. Uh, you've, I've got a couple already here. Um, you could save it now, or you can duplicate it. So here, if I uh, press duplicate, you're going to get one, two, and then three, and you can see we're now at two thousand six hundred points, and if you're at 2,600 points, generally the community is playing, say, 3,000 points. And there's a history behind that, but that just allows for a little bit of um, balance, a little bit of mixes. Uh, you can't take everything. So it's a good starting spot. You can also obviously play whatever you want, but, you know, that's up to you. So we've got uh, 2,607 points. Now we're going to come in and just start to finesse it. Uh, what do we got here? So it says not enough crew. You might as well add a berthing because they are free. Uh, so we'll just do that on each of these. Uh, there it is up the top. And up the top. Should have done that first. Now, one of the things that we are lacking straight away is the fact that we have no electronic warfare. Uh, I'm going to remove... Uh, I'm going to... Question is, do I want it to rotate all the way around or do I? And this one here, we're going to mix up a little bit. I'm going to put our interruption jammer. And now we can do, we'll have two ships that can do uh, radar jamming and one that can do comms jamming around that one ship. That'll be that red diamond that you see in games. And that provides um, the ability to uh, reduce the positional and velocity errors of the various different radar types. So in this one, uh, we're going to come down uh, on pave. 
they've all got frontline raiders there is a tutorial online on mechanics as well as the various um bit of testing but i think for one of them we'll just throw a parallax but we're going to need a micro reactor so let's add that in a micro there cool so that one's going to be able to provide its own locking and jamming we are going to come across to this one in the middle and because we have already placed on an interruption jammer we might just leave it with a front line um, but i might remove one of these for a bullseye yep all righty uh, so Cave can search and lock. This one can lock and jam. And if we come across to this one, we might mix it up. One, two, three, four there. This one here, I wonder if we can run a spyglass. This may is probably not the most optimal build, but yeah, you know. You start somewhere and you you finesse it later on, see how it runs. Um, you find the weaknesses in it as well. All right, so what are we at now? 2787. Um, so this one's going to provide EWAR. It's going to provide the micro reactor. I wonder if we should add something else into it. So at the moment, we've got two, two ships that can provide locking. We'll have the SANS that provide the furthest radar detection. Dogma's front line is really a points efficient. Uh, thing but we've also got then pave that can provide a lock and a medium range so we've got one of the radars on each and we've still got about 300 points so with that um i think i'll i think i'll leave now we'll come back over here because this well let's have uh, each of them have their own jamming oh sorry each of them have their own locking capability we have got to remove a we're going to remove one of the rebounds and add a bullseye radar now the spyglass will be able to find things, but we'll also then be able to lock it with a radar. And we're also going to add a adaptive radar receiver. So this is going to make our most powerful range, um, our most powerful radar see further. Uh, or sorry, it won't see further. It'll be able to detect smaller objects with the sensitivity and raising the noise floor. But we're going we're going to incur a positional error and a velocity error. This is uh, one of the things that you'd go, ah, oh, it's a little bit bad, but it's pretty negligible. It's a 0.1 positional error and nothing to velocity on the bullseye. So we're going to keep that in. Yeah, I agree with the 3K. Um, it restricts fleets. If you, take, if you have the larger points values, then you can just take everything. Um, and that makes it... You don't get the trade-offs of actually having to decide before the battle what are you going to bring. Uh, we've got spare power over on this one, so let's um, throw in some, and we've got the points. Let's throw in another uh, Aurora. Well, let's throw in our first Aurora. And we probably should put in some ammo first, actually. I'll leave that in. So I think we were talking about it the other day in the Discord about the need for about 20 minutes of firing for various um, for various weapon systems. So we're expecting to use a huge rate of fire from the 250s. Um, and with three of them, that's 12. So if we focus fire onto pretty much anything, we should be able to do decent damage. Probably not as much on a battleship, but we should be able to... Um, but going pound to pound against another light cruiser three on one should should definitely do some damage. But the things that we'll need to take note of when doing this is the recycle time, the auto loaded capacity, so it's just firing one, and it's reload time as well. I've already had a bit of a spreadsheet that I've been working on for that. If I just plug some values in, um, and we'll spit out how much ammo we need for each ship for these two fifty. Uh, what have we got? Auto load capacity one, seven, twelve, and four. But so saying around six hundred and seventy-five rounds for each of these ships to fire for twenty minutes. Now there is a bit of a a quirk. Put only double barrel guns with RPF for Corvette swarms. Yeah, you can definitely do that. I'm gonna also take a hundred points of RPF uh, for each of these ships. 
so we've got 675 now there is a quirk with the, the magazines effectively is that they come in i'll harp on this a lot um they come in groups of 50 so if you take um 51 units it's going to be two points take 49 it's still one point so you may as well use multiples of 50. um what have we got so i need about 700 rounds here it doesn't add too much but we're actually going to drop that down to say 600 take 100 rounds of that so we have 700 we'll also take 100 rounds of the rpf um, and that's going to give us even with rpf rounds you know we've got four uh, four cannons each firing a single round we'll have 25 salvos per ship so that's more than enough and we're just maximizing points with ap So let's uh, do the same thing for the rest of these ships 600 100 100, 100, 100. I'll click on certain things. It is cold in Australia today, relatively. I think it's like 20 degrees in Brisbane, super cold. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to need is flak. So if we come across point defense ammo calculator, here we go. Uh, we've got what, four. One point. Our reload set time is 2.14. Uh, take about five minutes worth of firing. It's probably a little bit more than we need, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. So the game's calculator is telling me uh, 2,850 rounds. And you can see that it doesn't take up too much ammo. So it does uh, cover, uh, you can get a fair amount. And because we'll be running them all together, we should be able to uh, take out a number of missiles. And with that, we've just crossed a 3,000 um, and two points. So this is the point where we now start to look at the ships and go, okay, well, what is the function and where can I cut uh, certain points? So, for example, you could just drop chaff a little bit. Um, if I was to do that on two ships. Uh, nope, didn't put any on that one. I do that on two then that's down to three thousand points and we're actually pretty much on the money question is you know is that what we, is that what we want to do uh there are a few failings i would immediately uh, if we had a wrap up of this if we had a wrap up of this fleet we would be able to see that we have a main offensive weapon so we've got four cannons on each each ship has a number of uh, point def uh, point defense including uh, one laser, but otherwise we're pretty much just round, running rebounds. Each ship is able to uh, run its own radar and provide its own uh, locking capability. So we've got the parallax, which can search and lock, the dogma, which has a integrated uh, bullseye on the front, and we've also put a, a bullseye on the side of the spyglass. So each can provide their own lock. They can operate independently, but they will run together. We also have two blanket jammers on the fronts uh, so we can um, counter thunderheads coming in. So we've got for both uh, the blanket jammers and the chaff, and we can then also uh, jam the enemy as well. We have an interruption jammer for the comms jamming if anyone's going to launch any hurricanes um, in a hurricane missile dump. How's the learning curve? Um, Learning, learning curve is, yeah, it's one of those ones where you've got a lot of simple on the surface, but then there's a lot of other, un, other underlying things. Uh, how ships build. The mic, I don't want to say micro is too bad, but when you have a look at something such as, um, when you start to get a lot of missiles coming in at you, uh, <laughs> you can do panic a little bit. But there, yeah, there is a lot of material, a lot of friendly people out there that, that can give you a hand. So. I think it's, I don't think it's any more than any other game, to be honest. Um, yeah, so the only failing, so back to what I was saying, the only failing that I'd see here is that we actually don't have any offensive missiles. Um, we just, and we, we haven't improved the drives either. We've just kept the drives uh, stock standard. We probably have maybe too much power. I wonder if we can uh, do some modifications there. Let's 
micro reactor. It only cost 10 points. I'm almost willing to just leave this one as it is and, you know, test it out because I think that's the, the way that a lot of these, these fleets go is you, you test them out. Um, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I do have a tooth um, talon. The game once randomized these names and I've just run them with my ships now. Um, and let's just generate single name, not debt. Uh, tooth, Talon. Another ship name that um, sort of fits with that theme. I'm just randomizing names at the moment. Um, Brown. Off. All right, so that's three ships in a light cruiser fleet. Uh, fairly good for newer players for the light cruisers. Fast, uh, decent protection. Uh, if you've got all your weapons in one of the um, groups, then you know just a couple point and click. No missiles uh, on this one, unfortunately, but um, that's a trade off I'm willing to take. But also, always drop one of the cannons for a VLS with a few, but uh, I'm just not going to bother. We'll save this as a fleet. Claw Fang? Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh. Fang. Yeah, good call. Um, zero. Let's call this 3CL. 3CL. Guns. And we'll see where that actually saved. That's oh, okay. So it's, it's going to be down here somewhere. Um, now, one thing I was talking about earlier is that you can uh, create blueprints. So, you know, if, to if Tooth is one that I want to regularly use, if I create a blueprint, I can then go new. Um, and this can be. Um, let's see that. Called a gun CL or a gun light cruiser. We call them CLs or LCs, I can't remember now. So if you want to then create a new ship, you can either do it from the blank hole as previously shown, uh, and that gives you a blank slate, or you can come in from a ship template that you always use. You know, if you always want to use this spyglass uh, something, and it, and it provides it in uh, alphabetical order. So this is uh, where it is gun CL. Gives you a little summary about uh, what's what's in there, what it does, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I'm happy with that fleet. Give it a save. Always double save. And I think we'll move on to uh, something else. Uh, I do have, actually, do I have a battleship fleet? Yeah, we'll build a, let's build a cannon battleship. Uh, we'll start from scratch as well. Get rid of that one. usually go like leap of henrietta i think is the name for the battleships uh this one here we're just going to go guns it's nothing uh nothing too hard again we'll just sketch in the main armaments first what have we got we'll also swap out i'll remove that cic was it uh, you have a basic CIC as opposed to reinforced. You can die in one hit if there's enough damage. Whereas if you got re the reinforced, it has a mechanic where it needs to uh, then take a subsequent hit after it gets down to like one or zero. And then you've got the Citadel as well, which provides a lot stronger um, hit points, damage threshold, and then um, it also provides intelligence as well. So I think on this one, we will add... Where is a good spot? Remove that. Uh, we're going to add a. You can go up the top like it's proper one. Yeah, we'll go up the. Oh, no, you can only get a citadel. Up. Oh, yeah, we'll go up the top. We'll go up, put a citadel up there. And then we'll do the same thing as we did before. I think uh, we'll come down. We'll add a berthing at the front because it will up on us about 
the various uh, need for crew. We're going to also sketch in, uh, we're going to put a reinforced mag in as well. First one's always free. And because it's such a large ship, I actually want to split up the ammo. Uh, we'll put another, another ammo down here and just a bulk magazine. And because we're a larger ship, I might also put in an intelligence center. But the intelligence center here will provide um, the identification. So when it says, um, it says on a ship, you know, um, warship type, the track number, it'll give all those various different details, and you'll see that um, in the game maybe later on. Um, it just is a lot faster. I think it takes about 30 seconds to fully identify a ship from nothing. And the main benefit here is that it's going to go to all your different, um, it's going to go to all your ships. So as long as they have comms, anything they see, you can identify through your intelligence center. But uh, you'll also be able to identify missiles. And when, if you know what the missiles coming in at you are, then you can take appropriate action. Um, hurricanes, then you can put on your interruption jammer to uh, comms jam it. If they're thunderheads, chaff and um, blanket jam. Um, if it's squalls, you want to turn your jamming off. And then likewise with gales, uh, you also want to use chaff. Nothing worse than turning on jamming, only to find out it's squalls coming at you. All right, so um, here we'll also put these into a front front grouping. Uh, one, two, three, down the bottom. So the front grouping is something that you can just have it. So if you're pointing your uh, ship at the enemy, uh, anything at the front is really what it's going to, um, all these ones will target. Your back one then gives you the option to target something at the, at the back without trying to get the ship to then roll to bring all of the guns to bear. If you got front, it'll generally sort of try to point the nose uh, at the target and then fire. What else have we got? And this one here we will also put in, needs to be a little bit more, uh, yeah, blanket uh, bullseye radar on the front so we have some locking. Now we could go something like a parallax. Again, um, at 9.5, that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, as opposed to the 11 and a half, we, we shave off 2Ks. We'll see most of the stuff with the Parallax fairly early. Uh, it's by far not the own mean, only means. Um, you could go a Spyglass so you could find the smaller ships a little bit better. Downside being is if we lose the, um, the bullseye at the front, then this Spyglass has this big uh, positional and velocity errors, which for a ship that is firing large, slow-moving projectiles, it's going to be a little bit... Um, maybe not the best so might keep to the parallax but don't just by no means think it's the the be all or end all it's just another uh yes item in the tool chest and gonna then want number of uh dc so we'll put uh and these things can take a huge amount of um, a huge beating. They've got large. Uh, they've got a large amount of armor, so really, you know, anything the rail guns will uh, hit damage internally. It won't really over penetrate. You've then got the ability. Um, the little one, little guns like the one twenty aren't really going to do a lot of damage. We'll add in a workshop, and we'll also add in a DCC. So we're going to increase the movement speed. And the repair speed will also throw in, I think, another DC at the front. So we're going to have oh, six restores, which may still be a little bit less, but that's okay. And we're also going to add in a rapid DC locker for people to run around. And um, they won't restore anything, but they'll put out the fires. And we can see here that we've, we've spread it around the ship. So we've got one there. We've got one up the top, one at the front, and one down the bottom. Would be more efficient to put the DC lockers in the 614 slots. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, we can certainly do that. Uh, what else do I have in? What else do I want to put in 618s? This is the size of a large DC. 316. 313. Um, I don't know what else we would put in the 618s at the moment. Well, we might come back and see if we can put them into better spots. But that could be a good idea, actually. Because we're guns, I'm putting in a gun plotting center. 
you see we're rapidly rising in points, so we might have to come back and strip something out. And before we forget, we probably need to do something else more important. And that is, uh, these sort of ships are nothing without spotters. So you've got a large ship, but if it can't see anything, it can't do anything. Um, and that becomes its problem. It needs eyes, it needs something else to provide those locks at the... Um, that the ships need to provide locks uh, for, for this ship so it can engage. You don't want this ship, like I did the other day, driving in so close that it then gets hit by beams or torpedoes. Uh, you actually want it to sort of sit around, what's its, what's it gun, uh, its gun range? I think it's about 8K from Mark 68. Let me find it. Uh, the ranges are actually linked to ammo of all things. So let's have a look. Uh, 11 and a half. So you, if that, you're at 5,000 meters, you're within back beam range. So you probably want to be staying around 6 to 7 um, with these sort of ships and not getting in uh, too close at all. Otherwise, you just get crumped um, and a couple of good hits will, will take you out. So let's have a look. Uh, we want to put on this a, a bullseye raider on the front. Get rid of the second one actually because we'll just duplicate this first one uh let's add in if we go a spyglass oh we can actually add in a spyglass corvette so it's not going to have anything on the front it's just a spyglass birthing enough power to get it to where it needs to be you can actually add other things in and then turn off the radar when you want it to do something um maybe a little bit more advanced. But for newer players, it's probably easier just to keep that power under um, 100% so that it's it's on. If I lose any one of these plant control centers, um, the drive micro reactor, this whole ship just crumbles. So, but certainly an alternative later on is to be able to uh, build a larger ship, go exceed the power limit, and just turn off your radar for a particular ship, especially if it's um, got something that provides better tracks, and then uh, use that extra power up. We'll just put that one in and then for this one i think we'll go sort of a mid mid range maybe they'll fly in pairs maybe we can we actually put a um parallax on this one maybe we'll put a parallax on this one sort of championing the parallax at the moment but it is not um i need to reinforce it is not the be all and end all many points is it though 275 so we're getting it we're getting fairly expensive we'll put a vls 23 on just for the sake of um self-defense i don't want to put anything uh, no shouldn't Maybe we'll just go with one of it. You can also drag these cards around too to reorder them. Bullseye radar, 23. Uh, maybe we throw a couple of repos on there. Right, round this up. Just in case anyone fires that, that one or two missiles at it, we'll come back and see if we need anything else. Uh, so for now, let's actually let's have two of those. Using the duplicate function, we'll now have... Uh, two that provide uh, a radar that can search and then a bullseye radar as well. You could you could get rid of this and just have the parallax. We'll, we'll see how we go with points. Uh, we'll put this into a rear mount. You can see a lot of fleet building is sort of going backwards and forwards. Uh, one thing that you'll hear about fleet building is building uh, a general fleet and then a specialized ship. So generally when they're talking about that um, is that you know, the fleet can do everything that you need to. You don't need to rely on teammates to provide a certain um, capability for you. So in this case, I'm not relying on teammates to do um, searching or locking capabilities. Um, and I have the ability to capture points, attack other ships, etc. Whereas if I was to put 3,000 points simply into this one battleship, it'd be a strong battleship. You could 
just chock it full of restores and uh, damage control and that is viable but if you can't see anything the ship is going to be a lot slower than uh, you know corvettes or destroyers uh, even like cruisers and then you're going to lose on those sort of maps like control where you just can't get around a map quick enough or the enemy uses really good uh, position, uh, positioning around asteroids, etc. So in this case, um, we are sacrificing points uh, in the build for the battleship so that we can always see and provide vision and locks. It was a torpedo, a torpedo uh, light cruiser or a, a missile light cruiser or a corvette swarm is really going to do a lot of damage here. Uh, what have we got? We come down. Uh, we're going to add some buffs in here onto our uh, cannons. Our cannons are our main weapon. So we want to um, do everything we can here. And with cannons, you basically just need ammunition elevators and mount gyros. Main one is um, main one that we want to add in will be the ammo elevators. I am going to go uh, to Mount Gyros though, simply for the spread. So we're going to um, add that in. We've got the gun plotting center I think we added previously. So we're down to 25 meters at 55 kilometers. That basically means the spread, if the um, game determines, for example, it wants to uh, target this point in the ship, then 25 meters around is roughly where all of these uh, various different cannons, or each cannon, we put a shot within 25 meters of that point and then that extrapolates out as you go further and further uh, one thing we will need point defense we are going to add auroras on the top you can add a little bit more auroras with uh, battleships just because they don't draw as much uh, power as you would have something such as a railgun although it might be better actually i'm going to put them forward and remove them these will be um, just rebounds and generally when you're building a ship you want to have at least two different types of point defense and that's because the rebounds have the ability to have an optical backup so if they get jammed and they determine that you know their positional um it, it's not uh, uh optimal to use the you know the fire control they're going to use an optical backup whereas with the auroras they do have the much better accuracy, the longer range, draws a lot of power, takes a lot of points, but uh, it, its integrated fire control can be jammed and make it less effective. So by having two, you're adding a bit of redundancy there. What would you say about adding PD on one side? Yeah, so this one here is, this one here I'm building as a, um, what would you call it? A symmetrical battleship. The other option, which is really, um, actually really works is to have that asymmetrical uh, version so in this case you would main uh, you would or in that case you would arm it exactly the same way as you would but all of these mounts on the side one two uh, where else can I do a uh, three at the back or and even this one on top and that one down there would all be point defense and you would just run this ship facing uh, that one way and yeah, VLS-23 is on the other side, so the reposts and the chaff could be coming out. Um, not impossible. Um, worked a good effect, I think. Uh, what is it? High scores, is it Firestorm? I know, or I think it's Blackwell, uh, Blacklight. I think it's your Carnage Incarnate. Both run that. Um, you, really, all you're doing is microing the heading. And then when you move, it using these thrusters here. So yeah, definitely something you could do. Maybe we'll build that. Uh, on another stream um, I think that that's an interesting idea I haven't really played with it yet and I've really just gone these stock standardy sort of ones it's cuz um, it's good really different tactics where is the BLS 23 this one we're just dumping with chaff not gonna bother with her posts Oh, 23, 2683, um, well, so one, two, now I think this one here we might, I'll do that here, right. um, what else do we want, we've got fire control, we've got guns, we should probably sketch in, I think we were still buffing, 
What have I got? You can just check how many of anything you've got. I've got two, two. Probably need one more. Ammo elevator. Also add in another micro reactor. Just for power's sake. Wait up now. It's okay. Uh, I think that's that's going to be okay. We'll add uh, ammo in in a sec. We've got six restores. We might come buff that as well. But within power, that's okay. Um, there is adaptive power. Um, I was talking before how you can turn the radar off and use various different. Um, if you were on this type of ship, you could turn the radar off and then make more use of um, point defense or something here. The game has an adaptive power draw so if you've got something that can be activated so something like point defense uh radars blanket jammers um any any of your e-war any of your mounts that are on the outside um basically when they activate or when you give them an order it'll draw it, that's when it'll start drawing power so whilst it says uh 85 now if this ship just spawned in it may actually only be using like 25 percent, for example what that means is um, as you start to lose power, or that means you can sort of go up to, you know, over 100%, you, you could do 120% and then um, cancel your fire orders for your guns and then just let your power, um, your point defense come online. And then from there, you've got the ability to um, go over that power threshold. It also means as you start to become weakened um, and you maybe lose a micro reactor and the power goes up, you start to make decisions as, okay, which ones should I be using? If I get attacked by missiles, well, I want all power to point defense. I need to cancel my fire orders or I need to cancel my uh, bullseye radar lock so that I can uh, have enough power. The game doesn't at the moment show us in the damage control board what the uh, power draw or the current power draw is. It just simply says if you have enough power or if you don't. Um, maybe that's something we'll get later on, but uh, we, something we don't have at the moment. Uh, what do we got? Now I've got two magazines here. Oh, we've got flak, so I'm going to add in some flak. Uh, on these larger ships, you do want to uh, invest the points in uh, just splitting up your magazines. And if you need, you need, you know, 800 rounds of something, split that across two magazines so that you do have a redundancy. If you take a missile strike up the top, are they far enough away from each other? Mm, yeah, I think they will be. Actually, actually no. Going to make them further away from each other. Basically, what we're trying to do is just create redundancy in this ship so that when something goes down, we can continue to fight. That means we also want to add in some of that. I'll take some AP just in case there's another battleship or something. Like we're not going to take a lot of that. Realistically, the HE here will do enough. I think we'll just take like 50 rent or two points. Um, if anything, that's probably too much. Again, not optimal, but one thing we didn't do on the other ship, no, oh, we got too much manning. One thing we didn't do on the other ship was, uh, or the last fleet that we created, was actually change the propulsion. So you can see here we've got two drives. You've got drive one and drive two. If they're your basic drives, you can also change out these reactors here for another drive uh, of a same type. If you add in one of these ones, it'll give you more power, but it's not going to give you any more uh, modifiers. But if you come into it like the Whiplash or the Dragonfly, then you can start to modify, you know, top speed, turn, uh, turn rate, angular thrust, um, and vice versa. So for a battleship, your radar signature, you could add um, that in, because let's be honest, you basically spot a radar a battleship at max range with everything if you're at a front line and it's got what seven or eight k um, radar detection range you're going to be able to see it if you um so there's no point using a prowler which will increase oh sorry decrease radar signature but penalize everything else so i think what we'll do is we'll actually take a radar on this one you could also add a whiplash but um the ability for these ships to turn and rotate are already super slow so one of the things or one of the weaknesses of a battleship is being able to bring its guns to bear. So if your ship is um, you know, facing forward and there's something you know, down, and down to the right, it needs to roll as well as bring uh, its guns on. 
the depression on a gun is not as high. Uh, so if we just jump in here, you've got a minus five degree elevation limit or a depression, um, but you've also got 40 degrees positive. So if, so if there's something up here, your guns will be able to uh, face and elevate at the same time and take that out uh, and start to engage that. But if it's down below, it's not going to be able to rotate. It's got to rotate and then uh, focus. So you can get caught out if you rotate um, down too much. So we're just going to add linear thrust. That's going to make us uh, take get off the mark faster when we turn. We'll accelerate quicker, but um, we're not going to change too much there, I don't think. Alternatively, we could. And we take the whiplash and the dragonfly to compensate for each of these things. Uh, I'm going to hold off on doing that, though. I think before we go too far, what we what we do want to do in, uh, or what we what we do want to do, is um, do you have a link to the spreadsheet you're using? Um, no, I don't, but I will throw it up. Um, I think after this, there was a um, there is one from the Discord that um, did provide some stuff, but it only it required you to do a lot of stuff in there. So I'll I'll put this one up. And that way everyone can use it. Um, I can't remember who made it originally, so shout out to them. I used it as a template. Um, again, minutes of firing is a lot easier. Uh, so what have we got here? Three Mark 68s and one Mark 66. Uh, reload time is 12.07 for both. So my calculator is spitting out that we're going to need about, it says about 1,000 rounds. Seems almost too high, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, so we've got 900. We'll go... I don't know. Right. Uh, we'll go 400 here. And 400 here. That in... Uh, I think I said I was going to do 50. They come in units of 25. Right, 50 there. And 50 there. Uh, we can add 450. And 450. Now this is just what the calculator is spitting out at me. I may actually be using way too much ammo. Uh, again, test and adjust for a lot of these things. You may find that your magic number is more around 600. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, this game is highly situational, so you know you may use all your ammo in one, and then nowhere near in much. But uh, that gives us a much closer approximation of how much uh, points we have left because we've already got these two ships kitted out. We've only got uh, two rebounds in there. Are we going for power? We might need more power, but uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do here? We could add in a whole bunch of defenders. We'll have um, all three-point defense types in here. Uh, I think what we might do is actually uh, add in some missiles. Just because we can, uh, we'll do a mix of, oh, I can't click at the moment. Drops up a lot higher. I may actually regret that decision. We might actually pull those missiles off and just have this as guns. Uh, let's add some more rebounds in. Each of these has a different range as well. So you def Defenders are only, what, 1,700 meters uh, with their ammo. I think rebounds are around two, and I think Aurora's around four, three. Yeah, so it's about 1,750, about two something, and then three. So you don't have a long time to really engage on a lot of these. Here's that other rear mount. There we go. Uh, now, because we have four rebounds, no, that can't be right. One. Two, three. Oh, it's because I accidentally put in a defender. That's why. We probably actually need more. And we're just going to load the rest of this out with defenders, actually. Um, rebounds, actually. We're going to get rid of that one. Basically, we're just going to have a battleship that runs in uh, figuratively, you know, still sitting out at that appropriate distance. Uh, and is able to engage. Now with six rebounds, that's going to that's going to chew a huge amount of ammo. Right, six rebounds at what did I say? One point eight one. 
Now, if I had about five minutes of firing, uh, which could be a little bit long, usually you, can, you could potentially get away with four, but we're going to keep it at five um, just for redundancy at the moment. So 4,500 rounds. And we'll split that between that divided by two. All righty. Okay. So I was saying earlier, uh, what you want to do is, uh, if you've, especially if you've got the capacity, each of these ammo types come in uh, X amount of points per unit. So if you've just joined us, you know, one point is 25. If you take 26 units, that's two. It's always better to round up to the multiple of um, whatever that ammo nature is um, and not leave any sort of points spare. Um, obviously, if you don't have the capacity, that's okay. But where you can, make best use to your points. Now we've got, still got 16 points left. Uh, we could add something to these other ships. We don't have any Iwa on this ship at all, though. Um, that could be dangerous. I'm willing to consider removing the rear gun turret. Putting something else on. What about an interruption jammer? Nope, not on that size. About here. Ah, the trade-offs of fleet building. It's always so simple. In theory. We're not even fully kitted out. Um, we could definitely lose one. Could you increase repair team efficiency? Yeah, we certainly could. Where have we got? We've already got a DCC. We've already got DCC and a small workshop. Probably enough at the moment. Probably buff that. I think I have seen a few where you buff that a lot more. I'm just wondering, point defense from missile, do we have enough to take down? I think we have enough. Don't have anything to combat jamming. Rapid teams at 10 points. Yeah, we could actually. Up the top, put one of those and possibly an extra antenna. Okay, so what have we got? Yeah, this one's got one. So we got 16 points. Let's have a look. Good spot. Have I used all these mounts? I have. So we could remove one and put in a C70. That's 15. That would take us up. Or an antenna or a damage control team. That's the question. I don't know, Blacklight, are you still kicking around? What are your thoughts? What would you do, Lord? I haven't really done the antenna thing. Let's do the antenna thing. Let's check our power first, because that's probably going to be our deciding factor. Oh, uh, yeah, we might be able to. No, too much. Hmm. All right, let's go with that. Let's actually go. Let's go with the um. Go with the extra damage control. We want to split it up again. So damage control center, rapid DC. Uh, done. Yeah, I feel your pain as well. All right, we got six points. We can. Um, I think we add in a little bit more over here. Smaller one with rapid teams. That's an, actually that's a. Obviously, we can't put anything there. Yeah, we we added in an extra wrap and down there. So now we've got we've got uh, eleven teams and sorry, yeah, we've got eleven teams and six restores. We should be able to easily, we should theoretically, be able to put out enough fires. Um, as well as, I think that one of the main things that we can suffer on um, a battleship is because these reactors and drives are so large, if we can't um, put them out, our fires out in particular fast enough, then we just explode. So um, on these types of ships, yeah, you definitely need to uh, have enough DC. I think 
we'll see in in this game here how this one um Henrietta. Hope that's how we spell it. And then should we call these names? Uh, yeah, pity of Marcel. What sort of it's the putty of Catalina? What about just Catalina? Yeah. All right, so that's going to be a another battleship, or uh, well, that's a battleship build. Uh, is it the most efficient? No. Is it a way to do it? Yes. Um, we could have potentially, it'll be interesting to see in the game how we go with um, all the, uh, how we go with all the various point defense. Um, and, you know, do we bring enough ammo? Uh, we have no jamming on this ship at all. Um, but we don't want to also get too far within range. Are we Can we do a burn through with a parallax? Yeah, we can do a burn through. So if anyone jams us, we can burn through and try and lock uh, with these other ships. But basically the tactic on this one is wherever this ship is, we want to have these ships off to the side. Uh, warning too far. So imagine if we had a cone of jamming sort of covering down through this battleship. What we want to do is actually have these ships outside providing locks and vision. And then as um, that occurs, we keep sending the vision to the ship that is in the jamming cone represented by the mouse. And um, you can have them, you know, on different sides. So you can have, you know, one off to the left. You know, this, this one here is only letting us, um, I think we can only go about 1,500 meters. So, you know, we, we, we can't show you, but this would actually be, you know, five plus kilometers. And you'd have these ships ranging forward of this ship. So with all the parallaxes, this one sees out to nine and a half out to this way. This one sees nine and a half out to this way. They'll pick up all the larger ships straight away. You pick up the smaller ships about halfway. And uh, assuming there's no jamming, you know, it's just a normal ship moving around. And then this ship here has the ability to engage out to 11 kilometers, I think it is. 11 that way and 11 that way. And from there, that way, that gives you, um, that's basically the counter here. We also then hope that the, any of our friendly fleets, and we talked about being self-sufficient and we sort of broke the rule here, um, that will provide us radar jamming because they will be in front of us. Now let me just cancel these because what we don't want is to um, deploy in our formation. So let's save this fleet. Um, let's call it zero, 0 the leap of Henrietta, the gun BB. Uh, is there any fleet in particular that you want us to build next? What? If so, throw it in the chat and we'll have a look at it. Uh, no, no one wants any particular fleet built. I'll just try for something else. Um, what are the fleet makeups? Let's have a look. So starter fleets are always a good place to, to look for inspiration. Uh, there's generally a few. Do something. Spend some time trying to optimize a CH fleet with an escort DD and a scout frigate. Okay, let's have a look at that one then. Yeah, 
what did you have on the Escort DD? Did you have any uh, beams or rails on that Escort DD, or was it more, morely just a platform for electronic warfare? And absolutely agree with getting that battleship um, behind cover. That's the one thing that one will keep it off the radar sensors, but also, uh, sorry, could we do a laser? A laser baby BB fleet. Laser DD. Yeah, we can have a look at laser DD. That's always, in a 6K variant, I offloaded all the EWAR into DD and made a second flotilla of CLs. Yeah, fair enough. The D DDs are pretty good, especially that, that frontal mount. Let's have a look at a laser DD fleet. So, this one here actually already has a fairly good um, setup. If you've seen Task Force Ash, You've seen Task Force Ash, you know, it's, um, it's basically, well, you, this is high scores, baby, I guess you could say. Um, you've got the options, it's got 250s there, 250s there, and 250s there. You have the option, I guess, to remove um, each of these and replace them with missiles or torpedoes. Um, one of the... Um, one of the things you'll see, I think it was Battle Report 4 on the channel, is actually Mazer playing um, Torp Beam Destroyers. And yeah, basically you, the, the tactic is charge forward, get in close, um, hit them with a beam, and then as they, as they panic with uh, the beam getting hit, I jump in with some torpedoes. So, uh, let's have a look at it. Uh, alternatively, Rail CH with Beam Gun DDs. Yeah, you could use the um, the DDs to get in, and provide the locks, and get the um, the CH providing fire support down the top. It's definitely a definitely a useful tactic. Although uh, I had a, I had a game last night where I just I couldn't get the line of sight on the from the rail heavy cruisers. It was just horrible. Uh, so what have we got here? So if we have a look, the co the core part of the Task Force Ash. Three beam destroyers. It's got guns as backups. It also has uh, two VLSs with missiles. Um, these are all Thunderheads, so you could swap out some of these Thunderheads for Hurricanes, but you're sort of going at like a one to one and a half. There's a Hurricanes eight points, Thunderheads are six. Chaff, uh, Aurora's at the front. Does it have any other point defense? No, it does not. Birthing, reinforced mag, yep. Got his multiples of 100. Rapid DC, Rapid DC. Dragonfly and Whiplash. Power, power. Micro reactor. Small reactor. Reactor booster. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't, actually don't think you can improve on this build too much unless you wanted to um, get some torps in there. I don't know. Actively cooled amplifiers, what do they do? Oh, yeah. Um, let's... All right, well, I think... I actually think Task Force Ash is probably as good as it's going to get. Maybe let's go with a, a, a CH build. We could do a laser BB fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look at that. All right, laser BBs, probably one of the ones that we don't, you don't see a lot of, but can be deadly in the right hands. Uh, basically, beam turret, beam turret, turret. Uh, I always read it as turret. Get a lot of shit for that. Um, all right, so the core, you've got three there. You, you do want to lock as well. Because uh, that's going to really help out with your um, your beams just staying on point. Speed is the name of the game here. So drive one. Uh, this one we will go whiplash. We will go dragonfly. Because we need to maximize uh, the turning. We may need more power. Uh, one thing that you see a lot with... Um, 
or one thing that maybe should change where's power the mic reactor and the uh, larger reactor are basically the same points but one provides significantly more i do wonder if the this reactor here should increase in points but at the same time it just means that it's going to be harder to take on these larger battleships so yeah i don't know uh, what else have we got? We could probably put some missiles or something up the top or maybe a, a 450, but power, three beam turrets are really just drawing power. How bad would it be to go with three to four drives? With three to four? I, we could definitely add in another drive. Um, you could add in another whiplash, for example. Um, get that top speed up to 21. I, what's four drives look like? we really mixed it up the problem becomes we just don't have enough power for a beam battleship we can add in uh power plants we'll move that we're just going to give this one here uh reinforced drop that one out and if we come up here and we start adding all these power plant control centers, quickly starts to get us back in, but they are small and damaged. If a large reactor is more expensive, yeah, uh, that's what I, as much as it's sort of like a, it, it should increase, you're right. It, it would just be, no one would be able to use these sort of things. A nitro, a nitro gun BB with four drives. Oof. But yeah, what? It, okay, well, let's try that. Uh, whiplash, dragonfly, whiplash. Maybe go another dragonfly as well. What do we go? Yeah, let's go two or two. Um, and now we just start adding in micro reactors. So let's spread these out. Let's put. It's not one. Uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, we're looking for 3B3s. Uh, probably not at the front. The one here. We've got a micro reactor there. We've got a micro reactor here. Bringing it down. Uh, where is a small energy area? Act in a add in a reactor booster down there to just mix it up. Uh, add in maybe another micro. We're at 94%. We could probably add in. Where is it? Reinforced thruster nozzles. So that way we can flank a little bit faster. Really get this up to, I think maybe it's like 28 and 25. I can't remember what the multiplier is here for. I can't remember what the top speed is when you flank. Is it 150%? I don't know if someone can check that. Uh, I think here we're not going to be able to take Aurora, so we'll probably just run Defenders to keep it cheap, and we will um, go that way. We will add in some more large DCs, so let's go one there, go one there. We'll add in a... Yeah, because we want to battle short this, we do want to add in a lot more um, rapid DCs to just fix things add in a couple of those i uh, i think it was three small raiders with one one large dragonfly three small raiders eh yeah it is weird you've got the um it's better it's better here uh you save 10 points sort of don't care about the radar signature Yeah, I had some connection issues the other day. Thought I was getting kicked, but it was just something going on. Mm, what else have we got? Uh, now we definitely want to go a small workshop. Repair speed will be important. Actually, so will a DCC. We want to get them around. Uh, what else we can? What else can we do? How many points are we at? We're still only at 1715. That's okay. Well, let's add another micro reactor in. Actually, let's go uh, a Mount Gyro. Let's 
go oh, that's too far forward okay, yeah all right over here so basically with this one i don't want to add anything too far forward otherwise it's going to get crumped uh, we'll add in a birthing because we'll need that but we will add in a mount gyro because we want the uh turrets here to swing pretty quickly Uh, and this is what we probably need as well. Energy regulators, uh, reload time. See how it just broken the rule. More reactor boosters. They can't take what I want. So this is where we're going to need to, uh, I guess, move some of these other ones around. Energy regulator. Put a energy regulator at the front swap this one out to be a micro reactor and the benefit for uh beam battleships in particular is that they've got energy regulators so energy regulators are like your um basically your ammunition elevators but for beams uh, or for your uh, rail guns as well so uh this one here is reducing the cooldown time of beams whereas the reload time and the cooldown of um rail guns then can also be affected it does come in a smaller size so if you go to a two by two by two you have a small energy regulator going on um, and maybe we'll put one of those in actually we might swap them both out i think we've got enough power now that yeah we can do that and so now our beam turret uh, will have a 27 second cooldown which is still pretty long actually and but it can traverse fairly well and then basically what we're going to do is when we find something, we're going to let the beams run out and then we're going to battle short them. When they battle short, we have the um, potential to take damage or they will take damage over time, but it will increase the, um, the way that we continue going. Focus particle accelerators. Uh, where are they? Let's have a look. See. Focus, focus. Ooh, yes. So, and this is also another good one too. Good, good call. Um, we can take increased damage, but we'll also reduce beam time. So, uh, we should probably put one of these in. Uh, what am I replacing? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna ditch the energy regulators for a focus particle beam. And there you look at that. Okay, so yeah, that. that very good point there um beams you do want that focus focus particle accelerator if you can see just how much uh that jumped up um just remove it again so you can see so it starts off at 180 and 300 and now it's up to 225 375 uh it does make the duration slightly less but five percent is not too bad uh, with battle short and the cooldown time sort of being already uh, down from, I think it's a minute, is the reload time for the beams. Let's have a quick look. A lot of the, at the moment, you're going backwards and forwards, just checking these sort of things. Down from 45. I think having a single one of that is worth it. Yeah, I 100% agree. 100% agree. Um, what are we at? 1,800 points. So we've pretty much maxed out all our modules. We've got more than enough power. We may actually be able to uh, come back and remove some stuff later on. We are relying on two plant control centers. I think we've got one here and we've got one there. They are in the sort of away from the center of the battleship. Uh, if you lose one of those, you do lose 20%, and that can be quite painful, but uh, I'm willing to risk it. Uh, what else have we got? So I think I think that's fine. I think also because we are going to be uh, in and amongst the enemy we do want to have our defense as well so uh you can you can basically put these things wherever again we'll go with a bunch of chaff and um if you, if you don't notice and you're like me and you click over things really quickly if you hold control or shift you can um, do multiples of these the so we've got chaff uh, we do want to have some electronic warfare on this one uh, I'm wondering if we maybe put it on the back mounts and it beams forward, or if we put it more on the 
Yeah, I think we'll put it on the back. Let's put blankets on the back. It's going to cost power. It's going to cost points. But if we are... Ooh, actually, this could be a, this could be a good asymmetric build. Or do we want to do it? I'll put a beam on that one, can I? No. No, I'll leave it on that. So basically we'll have, we can uh, provide jamming on either side as we close in. If we are you know, heading and traveling in this direction, then we can jam on that way and then likewise on the other side. Yeah, let's do it like that. Alternatively, we could also put a bullseye there. We could put a jammer here. That focuses, uh, let's try it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it there. How much power we got now? Close, but we I did talk about before about dynamic power. So uh, let's just name these jammers. Risk the reward. Absolutely. So let's call this one. Um, right, so this one here is right jam. And we've got left jam. Didn't type anything there. Left jam. All right, this is a good little build session. Where is this one here? Call this one uh, central jam. So this one can go either side, and then we'll have the other two. So you should be able to blanket jam two sides, regardless of whichever way we're going. What's the point of multiple drives? They don't seem to add speed directly, just modifiers. Uh, is it mostly for backup so you are harder to immobilize? Um, so the, if we just jump back down to jamming, it's a good question. Um, so your basic drives, yeah, they won't increase speed, but they do provide, um, well, they do increase. Uh, the modifiers stack. So if you just take a normal drive, you're only going to have a standard, um, you know, top speed of, I think it's like 16 meters per second. Um, but if you stack these drives in particular, the Whiplash, the Dragonfly, they and then add modifiers. So we've uh, put Whiplashes and Dragonflies for the increased top speed. And then we are offsetting the negatives here with the Dragonflies. And then we um, are also using the Dragonflies to offset the top, um, top speed debuff. With, by the whiplashes. You could do radars, uh, rate, a, a radar drive in there as well, just to increase how fast you accelerate. Um, maybe something to think of, but they also add in extra power too. So these other drives only do 500, uh, yeah, 500 kilowatts and you can add extra ones in. Four jams on one side so you can completely negate burn throughs. Yeah, that would be painful. So we spoke about, for anyone who's just joining us, we've, we spoke about earlier about asymmetric uh, battleship builds. We've already built a cruiser, a gun cruiser fleet today, um, a cannon fleet with spotters. And uh, we're now working on a battle, uh, a beam battleship. You can put all your point defense and jamming an EWAR on one side and then sort of leave the other side largely bare. And that way um, you can maximize everything on this side. We're At the moment we've put, uh, beams on the front, we've loaded it out with power, we've got blankets on the left and the right, so we can jam, and then one in the center, so we can jam forward with all three, or we can jam two on one side. Should get us through most things. Uh, we've got a fair amount of damage control. We've got uh, six, we've got eight teams and four restores. We could probably add one more damage control, or at least one more uh, large DC locker. Do want to spread them out? Uh, we'll add one more in here. We don't have an int center, but I think we could get away with it. Oh, multiple whiplashes to increase speed. Yep. Uh, what do we got? All right, so I think we now just need to add a point defense onto the ship. Uh, um, uh, what are we going to do? So we've got blankets at the front. We've probably got six mounts. We've got these two and uh, that one on either side, and that will give us uh, six mounts. We've also got chaff, a chaff dispenser down the bottom in the form of a VLS-23. Uh, 
the question is, which one are we going to use? Are we using blankets? Uh, sorry, are we using rebounds or are we going to use defenders? Uh, what do we do? And we're nearing the power. Might also be worthwhile investing in an in interruption jammer. Which I think we will do. Uh, so this will provide a 4K uh, bubble, a 4K, <clears throat> excuse me, a four kilometer bubble uh, around this ship. And that's going to provide, um, any, if anyone starts firing hurricanes at us, we're going to be okay. We're also going to protect anyone else around us, um, which means we're going to need to scrimp and save on these ones. So I think we might do a, a mixture of, uh, we'll do rebounds on the front. I will put an Aurora on this side. Yeah, that's going to be fine. I think that'll be fine. And what do you think? More rebounds or should we potentially do uh, some defenders? Why do defenders on this side, actually? Hmm. More or should we move the bullseye somewhere else? Should the, the blanket jammer be forward? Should the bullseye radar where we're we running? Okay, so if we this is the part where we just start to move things around as we start to be, we think of how this will play. So that's great. If that was to come forward, then we're going to be able to still have that forward mounted um, blanket jammer. We could then move the interruption jammer up and sit, in, sit it in front of the bridge. And then we could use this down here for more point defense in terms of the ship. That also then leaves a spot where we don't have a bullseye. I can use a parallax again. I've said it's not the be all and end all. We also could put in a spotter ship, so we could potentially just run a frontline radar, which we currently have. Um, but it needs something to provide a lock. If I put the bullseye on this side, then I'm not going to be able to... I'm going to have to roll a whole ship to get that lock. Whereas that... Okay, now nah, we'll just leave it how it is. Anyway, that's part of the, I guess, think, the thinking you go through as you build these ships is like, how does it actually play? If I get engaged from this side, yeah, I'm great. If I'm engaged on that side, uh, not so much. Um, yeah, we are going to leave it like this. Uh, the bullseye can then uh, twist and turn uh, whatever way it wants. Left side, right side. Maybe we should actually swap them, actually. Blanket jammer can then... Fire along the flanks. But we really just need the lock on the side. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, we're going to do that. So uh, let's swap the bullseye out. Let's add the blanket jammer at the front. So the blanket jammer will now just go left and right because these uh, turrets will just go left and right. But uh, this jammer, which we need to call back central, left jam. Uh, yep, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Add it to the uh, central jam, just so that you, when you're paying attention, you know what they're called. Uh, we'll now have that there. Cool. Uh, 2,000 points. We'll probably add some scouts or escorts into this. Let's just add in uh, here. We'll add in a reinforced magazine because your first one's always free, so your mouse will always take reinforce. We are going to take... I feel like we should just take flak. I don't like making a brawler build asymmetrical. Yeah. I've just jumped through a lot of mental hoops to... I think came back to the start point. Uh, okay, let's do this. Let's add another Aurora. Add another rebound. We're not buffing rebounds here, so... Three rebounds at... Where is it? Three rebounds at three second reload. I'm just using a calculator in the background to work out how much ammo I need. 
Uh, this one we're just because this is all we got. We'll add in eighteen hundred and seventy-five. Cool. Because uh, we're going to be closer in, it might be worth actually having more. Uh, let's give this one maybe seven minutes. Cheap two six two five. How are we going for power? Yeah, we're a little bit over. Does this have a good turn rate for a battleship? Uh, yeah, the turn rate would is faster than what it would normally be. Um, we've buffed it by 60%. Um, for this one in particular, for, for this one in particular, you generally need to have the turn rate uh, really be improved because that's where these beams will be kited out by smaller craft. Um, particularly if you just charge in the center. Uh, if you sort of go around one side, you'll be able to, you know, try and keep them um, off the off, off you. Um, things like rail guns, uh, a railgun battleship or a cannon battleship probably needs less of a turn rate, but still it needs to be somewhat decent and you don't want to be negatively impacting it too much without offsetting it. Because uh, if you do, their problem is they have limited guns to bring to bring to bear as well. So, but for the beams, yeah, you want to maximize this. So, I think that's probably the best that we can do. Okay, well that's all done. Um, low on power. Okay, yep, yeah, let's just add in. Not there. Not there. We're relying on three plan control centers. This will let us do all our jamming. It'll let us do all our point defense. It'll let us do all our attacks at once. Um, if we get attacked from one side, we should be okay in terms of power. Interruption jammer, that's drawing a lot. So are these um, point defenses here. So as long as we're not getting engaged by hurricanes, we don't need to turn this on. Um, we should have enough point defense to jam and chaff our way through it. Uh, we may just need to cancel beams. This is the case, but I think we have enough power redundancy that if, um, as things start to, to fall, we, we don't just become a, a house of cards. Uh, we've got a few more spots. All right, well, we've got, we're at 2,400 points-ish. Um, one thing you can also do is all these beam turrets here. You could join them into a group. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Maybe we can do top and bottom, I think. Bottom. Uh, the reason why I think we do this is because we really want to go, we really want to go side on for a lot of this. So these will turn together, but they have that, that limited arc. So they're going to, uh, always need to come all the way around, whereas the bottom one's going to be able to go from here and say come straight over to, to here, whereas this one that's here needs to come all the way back. And that's what the red and yellow circles mean. So by doing that, I think uh, that's a better option. Um, it also means we can not turn that one on and engage with these two. So if we do start to lose power, uh, all three, we can control which beams we actually want to use. To know how it'll work, but we'll um we'll try it in, in a game and see it. But we've still got 600 points. Um, as before, we should probably always have some sort of spotting ship. We could go for something like a, just a standard spyglass corvette. We could do a pinard corvette, so it's going to have a, a spyglass and a and a pinard. Um, but it's not really. Super great because we want to get in nice and close. I'm thinking we could maybe do a Yep. All right, what do you Lord say? Um it's my to separate each beam and have a spotter ship behind to fleet up and then shift click all on the single target. Uh, this then allows you to micro on smaller voxels and DDs with each one. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Um, just throw these in ungrouped. Um, I did 
I did say earlier, if you um, come into settings, uh, I can't do it here, but there is a, there is an option you can actually turn off this warning. Uh, it's probably, I for one generally maybe not like to have them all in groups, but if you see this warning like this, it usually means like power or birthing. So yeah, you can turn that one off. I might show you that one later, but I think that's enough. Um, so, all right, cool. So we've removed them from each ship. So now each of these can be targeted independently. And like we said, you know, we can target independent with the power. You can see the big list of power draw here. Um, so we want to add spotter missile defense ships. Uh, now this is a spyglass one. I'm wondering if we go parallax, parallax corvettes. Um, that way we can lock and spot. We probably have a little bit more power as well. Uh, I feel like I've championed the parallax today, but I think it's just because I'm using it to cover design efficiencies or deficiencies. What do we want? What do we want? You can already lock. We could give it missiles because we don't have any other missiles in the fleet. We could do something like that. Uh, we could then do uh, maybe point defense on each of these sides here. Too expensive. Two defenders, maybe. Too much. Uh, no, that's okay. Basically, what we're saying here is um, we've got we're over power, but if we don't use the defenders, then we can launch missiles. We might have to micro the the that off. Um, one thing I've been meaning to do with the parallax is determine how many. How many blanket jammers it takes to really drown it out the only drawback is um for anyone who's not gone through the whole uh, radar tutorial is that the parallax can only spot um can only lock and see what it can spot so if it can't if you jam enough of it and you can't see it at say something at six kilometers because it's been overwhelmed by jamming then you'll you'll lose your lock whereas usually your lock will, will hold um but yeah, it does. I think it does have the best burn through. Just have a look here. Um, the parallax can basically do everything of the other two. It's got the positional velocity errors of a front line. It's got most of the range of a spyglass. It can burn through. It can lock. So you know, for forty-five points, it's expensive, but you don't also then have to pay for um, you know the extra power of a spyglass. You don't have to pay for a bullseye. Um, and what ammo? Twenty millimeter slugs for the ammo. We'll add. We'll add some of those in. Uh, let's just check the burn through it was a 12 and it was an eight. Yeah, so the parallax does have the better ban, ban, um, burn through multiplier. And so what that means is uh, the burn through multiplier is going to take uh, this radiated power and then multiply it by that. And that means you should, um, basically as you send an energy out into the void, when it bounces back, you should be able to uh, have a better return. Yeah, just a, a, if you haven't seen the radar tutorial, I do recommend um, having a look. It is one of the more important and yet confusing parts of the game because it is modeled on real life, uh, real life radar values. Um, and I did need to get uh, Maze, the, the developer, to explain it to me. Um, and I did have to watch some radar tutorials uh, or lectures, like radar university lectures online, just to make that tutorial and get him to verify it all. Um, because, yeah, I, it's, it is quite complex. And, yeah, bullseye locks are the superior ones, which is why we've got one on the front here. Uh, that'll help our teammates as we get in. So if anyone's running a rail CH um, or a rail battleship um, or a rail heavy cruiser, rail battleship, we'll be able to provide that, and it'll make these better. It'll also mean that uh, we didn't, if I had a parallax here, this bullseye radar would uh, use its lock first, and then if that was destroyed, the parallax would then uh, do its thing. And I think I've just realized a mistake here with these defenders is that we're not going to have enough. Not going to have enough spots. I need to put an ammo. I need to put ammo in here. Mm, okay. Need to finish this. So if we do a reactor booster and I remove a plant control center. That 
that's 200. That's 175. Are we? Yes, that looks to be about 400 ish. All right. Okay, so this might not work. 5% mm. on a Corvette's not too bad, actually. You can actually, um, you can suffer through that. This is the part where we, we finesse again. So we talk, we spoke at the beginning of the, um, at the beginning of the stream of building specialized ships within general fleets. So here we can Iwa, we can, with the battleship, we can Iwa, we can, um, we can lock, we can defend itself. Um, repost. Yeah. I was thinking here what we, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of defenders. Right. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, we just got to think, what is the purpose of this ship here? What is it designed to do? Now, it can lock, it can search. So, you know, that's going to support. Um, now we're going to get it to sort of defend both itself and this ship, and then also maybe launch missiles. Uh, let's give it a post there. We actually may not need all of that. How many points do we have? Huge amounts of points. do all of it then i don't know if, i don't know if this is a, a good uh, point defense or that build to be honest um but we're, we're, we're gonna try and we'll uh, we'll just see later on uh, if it works in a game and maybe it doesn't i don't know you could have another one of the defenders in vls and add for the extra spotting good have one, have one of the defenders as in like two separate ships yeah it is easy space yeah i think we could i think we could get like three i oh, know we could probably get to probably get two corvettes but i have done that with the trade-off being slower and less specialized mount i do want the ability to rush around but i feel like we're not even going to be able to get enough like an if we add another hull in, we're not going to be able to get the missiles. Um, so, all right, so we've got the question of what, are, how are we going to play this fleet? When we spawn in, we're going to have the battleship. We're probably going to send it with teammates um, so that they can provide some additional um, coverage and distraction so that we don't just get focused. <clears throat> so that's the purpose of this. Two Corvettes without radar. As in turn the radar off or remove the radar completely. And deploy in. That goes with that. What are we doing with this bad boy? 600 points? I would love those. I'm just wondering... We dropped the parallax on this one and just made it a front line and then had another another one. A lock shared across the fleet. Yes. So um each one ooh, without radar completely. Oh spicy. Um, it scares me though. Yeah, so locks are shared across the fleet. Um if I have um, a lock from the battleship, then my teammates can use it as well. Likewise, I can run my own without uh without locks. And then, or track locks. Um, and then, yeah, if they, um, um, team, I can use teammates as well. So basically the radar network, um, the radar network always uses the best track within its vicinity. You can't see necessarily where the best track is. Game will always pick the best one to use. So uh, the best accuracy in terms of positional and velocity, if there's a lock, it'll use that. Um, and so this will change every second. You can either acquire or lose um, a track. But every second it refreshes, can I see, can I not see? And then every point four, um, every quarter of a second, it'll work out where is that positional and velocity error. So um, that red dot that jumps around the um, hollow diamond is basically that quarter second positional velocity error. Uh, all right, two Corvettes, ELINT only. Have a look. Might just build another one for the time being, and we'll just see if we can uh, finesse this one in. So uh, we are going to put the pinard on the front. 
So that way I don't have to elevate all the way up to get this belly mount up. Um, then what are we going to do? Basic front line. Now, I think we actually need a front line. Uh, I haven't tested this, but the Pinard range, I think, is dependent on the radar that it has. I think it's a 150% of the radar. Someone might need to fact check me on that one, or I might need to check myself later. But uh, I think that's how it that's how it goes. Uh, all right, so you're saying if we have this one here, and then what have another two maybe? We run like a, like a little three phase Corvette. Uh, let's drop this one. Uh, what do we got? Two eight, only eighty points. Let's add in a sprinter hole. Okay. Pinard one. What are we going to do? E wall Corvette without radar, point defense, front lining. We can do that. Let's... BLS there, BLS there. Let's add repost. The repost or a post? Yeah, so it is 150%. So we do need at least a radar going over. So just remembering, let's just do that. So this one here, the cloud. This game does some weird names, but uh, let's call it just the Susanette. And this one here can just basically run behind this battleship. So uh, let's form the Susanette up behind this one. Scroll out. Um, Let's maybe put it about 800 meters and let's put it high. Now let's drop the Luciana. Uh, I like the Luciana's name better, actually. Uh, of the Yulin ship radar. I think it's of the order. I think it's uh, of the uh, the radar of your ship. Mm. Yeah, we're at two seven two seven five eight. All right, let's try a frigate. So yeah, if you if you're watching around making these types of ships, uh, sometimes this is what you do. You just go backwards and forwards. And it's actually it's a lot easier with people to discuss. Um, we put them high so they make use of PD. So this one here, just ignore points at the moment. Let's maybe also throw an Aurora on it because it's a support ship. Uh, where have we got actually our point defense? Let's put our point defense below. There's our 23s. Okay. Let's add that one on. Let's remove this one off. Uh, we're going to add in just four. Add in a whole bunch of. Yep. Okay. Got an Aurora up the top. Still got heaps of point defense. Uh, basically, we could add a jammer. Point defense jammer. Um, we could add a, ra uh, a blanket. So, actually, let's... How would this one fly? Let's dump the Susanette. Let's put the Adriana again behind. Uh, I'm not necessarily a fan. Uh, how far is that back? 2,000 meters. I think that's 500 meters. I think is more than enough because we want the point defense coverage. Um, I'm not a fan of putting them directly in a line. You'll see it with like um, some of the other ships. It causes them to block gun angles and whatnot. So you'd, I, I do find it is good to offset sort of like a, a B-17 flying fortress formation you know each of them are offset from another position so that they can still shoot up left and right and down and then the next ship in its position covers its top um and, and whatnot so uh let's do that uh, which means if it's on top we want that's how we're going to play i'm going to move the vls 23 back to the other side 
and then we will put um, the another Aurora underneath. And the reason being for Auroras is one, I have the power, and two, they have the longest range. So that will give a 2,500 meter bubble around this ship. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that goes. Let's add four of those, and let's add in a whole bunch. Basically, these reposts will just cover this ship. Yeah, it's good to see other people doing it. Um, it it really, I think, is a... It's probably my gripe with Task Force Ash, is that um, whilst it's a great triangle, they should be offset, and you could also set them, I think it's to true or relative. I, can't, I think it's relative that lets them all turn towards the same way independently, and that way it doesn't need to swing like a door. They can all pivot on their own points and, and do what they need to do. Um, basic CIC, we are going to put the basic CIC in the middle. We've got a free berthing, so I'm going to use it. Basically, it'll just soak up damage uh, from below. And I'll actually, we're going to put a reinforced, reinforced magazine because it's free. It's always worthwhile taking one. So if anything shoots from below into the CIC, it needs to get through that. We'll put a berthing up the top because it's free. Again, sandwiching it there. Actually, we're going to put the berthing at the front. And because of this ship, maybe I want a battle short. Uh, I will put in a DC. I do want to keep this ship alive. Doesn't make sense for Elint to depend on paired radar. Yeah, I might need to check that one. I, I'm, I'm sure it was for the radar of the ship. Um, yeah, I don't know. Because, but it's picking up information. It's picking up radar from other ships. So it would also make sense then to be, um, it would then make sense for it to be picking up from other ships. So you, you could be right, Jason. I, I will confirm and throw it in the comments um, just to make sure that I'm not telling porky pies. Um, all right, well, I think this ship is fine then. I don't think I would do anything else to it. Sorry if I'm rolling around a lot. Um, I think we just leave this one as it is. It's got a jammer. So it can jam down. So now we can have potentially four jammers forward, three jammers to any one side. It's got two additional auroras. They do work. Okay. I I I could highly be wrong. Don't don't get me. You know, I'm I'm happy to admit that I'm wrong. I wonder if anyone's in the Discord. Um, hold on, let me throw it down. Uh, uh, quick question. Does Elint require that? I'll, I'll get back to you. But I, th I think you just could be right. Uh, all right, so I'm going to call this frigate done. This fr the support frigate for that battleship is fine. We now just have uh, this fleet or this ship over here. It's 170 points. We've got a pinout on it. Um, so it, sh it will detect. Uh, we could. Question is, what is the purpose of this ship now? So this ship is that ship is for um, damage. That ship is support. What are we doing with this corvette here? Uh, um, all right, let, let me ask, let me ask the Discord. Um, what's um, with Elint? Is the detection of 150% for radar equipped or for detecting radar? I don't know if that's going to refresh my memory. It's one thing that I would um I would like to see with the game if I if I was to um if well, one one thing I'd like is to to have these sort of things uh, just incorporated into the game a little bit more. Um, so for example, with the pinner, maybe it says I don't think it does. You know, if it um has a 
stat, like 150% of, you know, a picking up of your own range or of the enemy ship, I'd like to see it on the unit cards or in the description um, because I think that's important for new players to be able to understand what's in the game, how, how do I use something, how do I do something. Um, it's probably my only criticism really at the moment is just to, um, to get the mechanics thrown out um, to the wider audience as well as to have those sort of um, background stats brought to the front, um, whether on the unit cards or, you know, if you're on the home page and you could just click a, you know, a library um, or a battle manual that said, like, this is a quick rundown of radar and, you know, a short, like, GIF, GIF, I can never remember how it said, uh, so that you, people could see it. I think that would be great for the player base because, um, and I know that some of it uh, has been discussed and doing, um, like all things, you know, it's, it's one developer coding this, but uh, yeah, that would be my only real criticism is just making it easier for newer players to understand some of these things. And even for people like me, just to remember, what are we doing um, for, for certain components? For capping, yeah, absolutely. I think this is a capping ship. Um, we've got... 80 points so i think we can um, accept that a frontline radar is maybe good enough because we have an elin at the front for everything else um what do we got basic cic so again basic cic goes in the middle reinforced goes uh below where is it there we go reinforced we will put i probably don't need berthing but i'm going to add it in i'm yeah we're going to add uh, berthing at the front might add in a DC locker just for the 10 points. Um, what do we want? Do we want to equip it with missiles? And we want to equip it with missiles and point defense so it can defend itself. Uh, what do we got? I think we have enough power. I think we have enough points. Or do we want to add a gun or something underneath it? I don't think adding a gun is probably going to do too much. Because then it can really only target would but with the other way you could cost the other way with no reactor Ooh, okay that's an interesting build maybe we'll have a look at that after this I, I i do encourage anyone who's got a good interesting build to throw them into the workshop because um yeah there is so many different variations but i think we'll try the jason's one just to see how it works out um i think for this one we'll go vls 23s I think we will add a vls 23 Oh, sorry, a VLS-16. Uh, again, we want some chaff. We want some of those. Uh, we'll go five and maybe like six. This one here is really just for those stray missiles. Um, I think that's all I want it for. We're going to add in... We're going to add in... Sorry, well, I'm looking for missiles here. Uh, combination of thunderheads and hurricanes I, th I want the thunderheads for waypointing i want the hurricanes just in case or to um, buy cha bypass chaff and really target something like this which isn't going to have comms jamming let's add in say three let's add four it's going to hit us right on the point um so now i think we've got with this capping ship it can provide detection in the early game it will then defend itself with the VLS uh, 23. And I think in the late game, we can use it to either finish off any smaller ships or to defend. So with this one, I don't think I'd want to rush forward with it. I would probably be more conservative in its approach. And then... Um, that's, too, that's too hard to say. Think of your casters. Um, yeah. I think that that's the way to go. So this one, conservative play at the begin in the early game. Use the Elan tracks, cross reference with your with your mates Elan, um, and then move to cap later on after some of the damage has been done. And burn throughs burns me that hurricanes are so expensive. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the modular missile. To be honest, um, it'll be interesting to see the the different things that we'll be able to come up with. But yeah, just quick summary of this fleet: brawler gets in there. Different, uh, we've got all the different turrets, we've got different Iwa, we've got a support ship, and then we've got uh, a cap ship as well. So uh, let's save this one. How long have we been going now? I think we've been coming up for an hour. Two hours. Jeez, all right. We've done well. 
Uh, let's call this one the uh, 3K. Uh, what do you call it? Beam BB uh, support. Uh, I don't think I can use the plus symbol. Uh, support frigate. Elint Corvette. I'm not very imaginative with these names, but it helps me pick them. I'm actually terrified of the modular missiles. Yeah, I think I think we already spend a long time within these, um, within the builders, the fleet builders. Um, actually, I don't want to. I'm going to change. I'm going to randomize this name. Also, how are you not going to know what and how to counter your enemy missiles? Yeah, I think intelligence will become important and. Katrina, I like that. I, I can say that we are a... Um, there is a whole balance phase that we do need to go through as well. There'll be a whole bunch of testers for that. And hopefully we can work out all these kinks. Um, you, you will be able to... Um, the, I think the last devlog showed it but they basically said you know the current missiles in the game will be rebuilt for you so if you want a squall or a, a thunderhead it'll already be there and then from there you can go and modify um but yeah that'll be up to you uh but yeah the, the amount of options i think I, it'd be interesting to i'd have to ask Mazer how many options that there'll actually be um within the game but yeah there's probably a lot of um options out there Oh, look, uh, I, I get it with you. Um, Varag, I hope I said your name right. The reason why I'm partly doing this stream is because I need to um, need to build new ships uh, and new fleets and um, then also partly because I need no one else is explaining so much. There's a lot of rambling in here, but I think there are some nuggets of wisdom. All right, so that one's done. So we got three fleets today. Um, we might call it there, and um, I think maybe over the, the weekend, my weekend, uh, we'll actually get some games in with these fleets, see how they go, maybe do some tweaks as well. Uh, there you go. It's uh, actually one thing before before I head out. It's uh, of the radar you're detecting. So, yeah, so it's not the radar that you have. It's the radar you are detecting. So we could probably cut out um, some of the uh, radars of that Corvette. But I think for now, we're just going to leave them in there. Uh, see how it goes. But thank you, M1 Abrams. I, I needed that. All right, look, I'm going to call it there. The... Um... The, I think we've done two hours. We built three ships. I think we'll do this again, uh, maybe with some other fleets. I'll, I'll have a look at maybe, you know, torpedo light, cru uh, light cruisers or missile light cruisers, and we'll build something like that. We'll sort of go through the main uh, fleets that we have within the game, and then you know, people can take that. I'll also upload these to the um, Steam Workshop so that if you want to use these things, uh, it'll be there. Um, so if you've contributed today, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, you can play with these fleets, modify these fleets, and I'll upload them now. All right, chat to you all later. Uh, thanks for all your input, and I'll see you at a later date.